Welcome back to the Word in the World podcast. Where we bring you topics, talk, and truth. Everything from the news to the New Testament. Can you hear us out there? Can you hear me? (laughs) Welcome back. Safe in your homes. Welcome back. Safe in your homes. (laughs) Man, what's going on during these uh, quarantine times? It's been like a week since I saw y'all. Yeah. Good, man. Yeah. 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 Nothing and everything. Yeah, y'all been showering and stuff or nah? I have Mm-mm. been showering. Nah, all right. <laughs> nah, I'll tell you what this. time, but this is going on, man. I'll check this out. <laughs> oh, okay. I got here. I gotta get a cut, man. Okay. I'm looking like everybody look like this though, so I don't feel bad. Everybody is right? crazy. Yeah, <laughs> except for you, dog. You clean. You right. clean. <laughs> I gotta stay clean. <laughs> I got. Oh, I'm man. letting my nails grow, though. You know, oh. Let's see what happens. <laughs> wait, wait, what's your goal? What do you mean? Right, I where is the end? I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just let them grow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, let's start. Wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think it's funny, but okay, that's fine. Nah, it is. keep it. It is funny. Keep it. it keep is. it. Keep <laughs> it. It's funny. Let's go. Anyway. All right, guys. So, <laughs> this is we, great. Uh, I'm glad that we starting on a light note, man. Because yes, yeah, honestly, need it. if yeah, if, if we're gonna be honest, is for me personally, I think for y'all too, it's been like a rough week, rough few few weeks. But like mm-hmm. for me personally, man, this this past week was very rough. Um, just with like anxious thoughts, uh, worrisome thoughts. You know, how am I going to get the bills paid? You know, where am I going to get grant money from? Is it going to come, you know, in a timely fashion? Because I'm trying to get, like, the small business grant stuff and the independent contractor stuff. Um, So, yeah, man, this past week I've been, like, thrown off. And that's kind of what we wanted to uh, talk about today, right? Yeah, yeah. How have you guys, like, minds been during this time? I kind of like how you just went through like what was going on with you the past week. Cause as soon as you started talking, I was thinking like, yo, so like, I'm one of these people that um, have been deemed essential. Right. Uh-huh. And I go to work every day and I'm around a ton of people. Right. And so all throughout the day, I'm like, you know, and then where I sit, a ton of people pass me. Right. Like mm-hmm. literally almost everybody in the building passes where I sit. So it makes me think, like, man, one of these people will call for that germ is going to float across the room and get on me. And then what I'm thinking about, too, is, like, like my wife's uh, parents stay with us. And so I'm always thinking, like, you know, they're elderly and, you know, I don't want to bring home something that's going to jeopardize their health. You know, mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm literally walking around with, like, that that stress. And I, I was telling you guys, man, I was washing my hands. I think I told you guys, but I've been washing my hands so much that they like if I don't put anything on them, they are literally like my palms are literally white, and they mm-hmm. like I can feel my skin cracking. My hands look like I'm 80 years old right now. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm just washing mm-hmm. because of all this anxiety and fear that I'm gonna bring something into my household. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's like that's been on my on my on my shoulders like all week long. Just been thinking wow. about that every day. You know? Mm. How about you, Julia? Yeah, pretty much the same as y'all. Um... Or similar, I should say. I feel like I've been kind of doing escapist things lately, especially mm. this past week. I feel like mm. I've been mostly mostly okay, but like to be honest, like I just been vegging, watching everything on Netflix. I bought, <laughs> yeah, I subscribed to ESPN Plus, so now I'm watching like the D Wade uh, documentary. I gotta go over the Vic documentary. Mm. I'm just gonna go through all of them. I've been playing True. video games. I feel like I should be doing something important, but if I'm being <laughs> honest. I'm just like, what yeah. for? I don't know what tomorrow holds, what next week holds. Right. I, I've I been love vegging. that you kind of introduced that aspect of it because yeah. Marcus and I mentioned like, you know, our worries, but how have we been coping with them? True. I think for me, I've been eating. Um, <laughs> still, yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> I've been eating a lot. I still uh, have been, like, trying to go jogging and work out and stuff. Like, uh, I'm blessed to have a, a facility that I can still go to that's, that's private. Awesome, so, like, it's only me in there when I go, and it's, like, sufficient for what I want to do. So I still kind of have 
my outlets. Um, and I've, I've definitely, I mean, I've been reading the word, not as much. Uh, I actually got into, I don't know if y'all ever read the uh, Westminster Confession of Faith. Faith, Mm-mm. I can't talk. Mm. That joint is solid. So I've been kind of reading that. Um, it's real good. Um, okay. But like, besides that, though, I've been like stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I'm not doing those things. I'm like, I'm stressing. Yeah. But, uh, it got it got better toward the end of the week, though. And and today was probably like one of the better days. Um, I've been spending a lot of time hanging with my wife and, and uh, she's got projects. So I've just been like kind of helping her and stuff. So true. True. Yeah. What you been doing to cope, Marcus? Just um, I had I had to shut off, yo. Know, like shut off the media, man. Like shut off the news. Like like tuning in every day because I got into this mode, right? Like uh, when we, like Jason and I, a few weeks back, we were looking at like uh, investing in stocks and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So like like getting into that stock market mind frame, um, you kind of forced to be into the news because you got to stay, you know, on the current events to see like what's going to happen and how it's going to affect companies and stuff like that. But like I kind of just got into this thing was like all I was doing was listening to news. And so when you start to hear, you know, like New York now has 30,000 cases, you know what I'm saying? And 700 deaths. And then like, you know, the next day it's even higher and higher. And then you start to hear the numbers in your state go up, you know what I'm saying? And then in your county and then in your, you know, city, neighborhood, whatever, like you just feel like it's just coming in on you. It just stresses you all the way out. You know what I mean? So I was like, all right, I got to unplug. So I just started unplugging and just focusing on, you know, like, of course, I had to focus on work in the, in the, in the past week because I started, a new, you know, a new situation or whatever. But like focusing on the kids, man, you know, and just like like playing with them and trying to have fun with them and just so unplugging from the negative and just tune it all the way in as much as I possibly can to the positive. You yeah, know what I'm saying, but you know, and then doing some uh some Netflix binging a little bit too. <laughs> that whole uh that was it Tiger King or something like that. Everybody's been talking about that, so I, I, I heard that, about that. I, I tuned into it. that, watched a little bit. It's interesting, man. Yeah. But uh, you know, and then uh, I got my my favorite one of my favorite shows right now is uh, Alter Carbon. So I've been watching a little bit of that. But uh, definitely yeah. watch that. Yeah, just just really trying to occupy my mind with with enjoyable you know things or positive things you know but like forcefully unplugging from the negative you know so that's that's kind of been like how i've been how i've been coping right 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 yeah i think uh i think this is you know a great way to start the episode because we sometimes uh as christians like you want to you want to think um that you know we live in this space where we're not affected by what's mm-hmm. going on around us in the world you know we 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 preach the gospel and we believe um all these promises in god's word um and and we stand you know with our flag raised and stuff but if we're honest kind of like the things that we're mentioning now like yeah we're not always in our word you know we're not always like seeking god's face you know we're not always um feeling the most encouraged we're not always like uh without worry and all that kind of stuff we do get anxious and we do Mm. you know fear the future and stuff like that even though you know uh we we have an understanding of things that hasn't been exactly um i guess made aware to uh unbelievers our eyes are open to you know the truth of god in his totality as far as he's revealed it to us um, but right now, this is one of those times where it's like, you mentioned it earlier, Marcus, like our faith is being tested along with, you know, a common, I guess, um, threat against the entire globe. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. But it's for us, it's a personal, like, okay, do you believe, uh, in everything you say you believe? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess we could we could kind of start this this off with talking about, I guess, proper ways, not the Netflix and the binging and all of this stuff, but <laughs> when we're actually like... Um, Don't judge me, God, dog. Yeah, right. you know, when, we, when we're not, no, when we're not eating, I had to, I had to really, 
I had to tell God personally, and I don't know where this episode is going, but I like it. I had to personally tell <laughs> God, like, I have been enjoying food more than, like, mm. you. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, I I would rather sometimes go to sleep with a full belly and a nice sweet meal than mm-hmm. actually like praying or meditating on God's word or yeah. something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Um and it just hit yep. me the other day, like this is exactly what you're doing. <laughs> Cause you know, I you try to like make excuses and stuff like that. Like, nah, yeah. it's just, you know, this is part of my blessing and <laughs> But nah, it's like I'm actually <laughs> my flesh. This is me and my flesh, and this is what I want right now, you know. And I don't yeah. want God right now. I actually just want to eat something for, so my body feels good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, wow. man, and that's part of part of my. That's part of a. That's like an anxious reaction for me. Hmm. Is to like is to turn away from God, which is interesting. You know yeah. What I mean? Yeah, I was actually thinking that when you were talking, Jason, that that is somewhere in the manual, somewhere, uh, the psych manual, <laughs> that <laughs> eating, no, seriously, because eating is comforting for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. For yeah. those of us who are higher on the anxious side or having a lot of those emotions, we can turn to food as a some type of relief, and we do feel yeah. relief. So that's because interesting. It's, it's, it's like a, and we know how the the flesh, man, and the flesh yeah. and the world and the enemy, they kind of they work together, you know, and that's mm-hmm. a whole different thing, but like I find that like it's a lie, you know what I mean? It's like, it's it doesn't give me joy, you know, it, it really doesn't even make me happy, because mm-hmm. as soon as I'm done, I feel cr- it just gives me pleasure. Yeah. That's, that's different, Ooh. you know what I mean? Wow. It gives me pleasure, but right after I'm done, I, I'm like, yo, I'm an idiot. Yeah. Like I feel terrible about what yeah. I just did. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's that, it's that same. It's like the, it's the fruit. Like he dangles it. Like, hey, this is good. Then it, God ain't say, you know, you shouldn't eat this. I literally Jeez. told myself yesterday, like, nah, this ain't gonna be greedy if I get two sandwiches. And it was, it was the enemy talking, dude. But it was me. It was like my flesh. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Julia. Like that. It's, it's a. I guess psychology will call it, you know, like a coping mechanism or whatever. But for us, mm-hmm. I feel like it's definitely like a work of the flesh that the enemy just uses. Like, oh, no, no, mm. no. Nah, yeah. Eat, eat more. You'll, you'll be all right. Yeah, mm. feel good. Go ahead. God wants you to feel good. You know? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> He's made everything for you to eat. Nothing's mm. unclean anymore. Eat it all. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Man. I don't know. Hmm. But what do what do you uh, when you think about I guess as Jeez. Christians how we're supposed to deal with anxiety? Like, what kind of thoughts come to mind? I think it's interesting. I'm still kind of on your last point, bro, because. Mm-hmm. And I got to be honest, man, you know, what I like about this episode so far is uh, the transparency, man. I think it's awesome. Um, but like all this week, it's like I would keep having the thought, like, you should you should pray, you know what I'm saying, for your household. Mm. You should pray for, you know, like the neighborhood. You should pray, you know what I'm saying? Like, you should pray for all the people who are like losing their drug, uh, losing their jobs, and you know having issues, you know, um, as a result of everything that's going on. It's like I would literally have that thought, and it'd be like, "But I'm tired," you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or, <laughs> or I want to watch, you know what I'm saying? I want to watch what I'm watching, you know what I'm saying? And so it's like, I I chose to do the pleasurable thing, you know, like you were talking about, like the pleasurable thing, rather than the uh, the thing that I was being called to do. You wow. know, so it's like, yeah, and it's, it, it was very easy to make that decision. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like I had to, I would had, I would have had to fight to go into the other direction to be like, you know what? Let me get down on my knees. Let me be obedient to what you know I'm hearing right now. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And actually, you know, I mean, it kind of would have been like, a, you know, a little bit of a, I would look at it like it would have been a little bit of a sacrifice for me to do that, and I wasn't willing to make that sacrifice. I, instead, I chose to do what was pleasurable to me at the time you know what i'm saying and what comforted yeah. me you know what i'm saying like what was yeah. comforting me 
Um, but I just, you know, I, I kind of, I've been struggling, you know, I've been, I've been like struggling, struggling with that. Like, yeah, it's like, I feel so, uh, you know, I guess like afraid and I'm so, you know, I'm in fear and, you know, I'm worried about things. It's like, I'm just, and, and it causes you to just address yourself. It can cause you to just address yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, what can I do to feel better rather than, you know, anything for anybody else? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 So, uh, but uh, I guess like this. Uh, mm-hmm. No, nah, but because you did ask the question, like, uh, like, what should we be doing? You know, what is the proper like response to all of this? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, and then it's it's interesting because it's what the word says, and it's it's almost like immediately opposite to like uh, how we feel. Like like uh, we were talking about the scripture, you know, in Philippians chapter four. Like, don't be anxious about anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But in everything, prayer and supplication. You know, but but in everything, yeah, with thanksgiving. Yeah. So it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then it says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And it's like, with everything that's going on right now, how do you even like look at the beginning of that statement? Do not be anxious about anything. You know what I'm yeah. saying? How can you how do you even transition from, you know, like how you feel to like that mindset? Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, and I feel like that's, that that scripture is like instructional though. Yeah. Because it's 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 going in with the like the presupposition, like you you may get anxious, but as yeah. soon as you get anxious, here's what you do. XYZ, prayer, supplication, thanksgiving. And then it's like, then God does the rest. Yeah. You know, your heart and mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we, we stop at the anxious part. Right. And then we just do jogging, Netflix, food, this, that. Uh, what did Julia say? Hang wires, uh, undo wires. She said, she said, I'm untangle, untangle cords. These wires. I got to untangle. <laughs> my entertainment system needs my we don't attention. Untangle cords. Yeah. <laughs> On the to do yeah. list. Like we oh, avoid, we yeah. avoid all the other stuff, you know that 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 uh, particular scripture says. Yeah, we stop at anxiety, man, and it sucks, dude. Wow, it does. wow, it does. yeah. It's we take we take the physical route in handling the anxiety. You know yeah. what I'm saying? When it's a spiritual solution to the problem. You yeah, know? like it's, it's that's nuts to me, and I love how you say. Like we got this small thing to do. Like, don't be anxious. That's the situation. That's the that's the issue at hand. It says then prayer and supplication with thanksgiving is our work to do. Yeah. Like that's our part in it. And then the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts. That's like a like, all right, I got you after you do this part. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? But we can't seem to to, to do that part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, How the, you that's what we get there if you didn't do the Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, interesting, man. Wow. Is, dude. And yeah. that, that kind of leads into this like conversation about I guess how in these times because I I was gonna say um we we in these times should lean on God's word. And it's mm. so it's so like, you know, um what's the word I'm looking for? It's kinda for 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 Christians, I guess that's a cliche thing to say, you know, like, Mm -hmm. you know, lean on God's word in these times and stay encouraged in the Lord and all that. But like, no, that's literally what we should be doing. Um, And it's like, as soon as you open his word, Mm -hmm. um, depending on, because a a part of what our our conversation is like, and y'all can, y'all got to help me with this, but I feel like the things that we have been doing in our flesh they kind of distance you from god not like he don't love me no more but like i gotta i gotta i gotta almost like build myself back up a little bit to get back in this um state of like encouragement and like um 
just feeling joyous, you know, with him. Like, I, I look at it like, you know, you building up a tolerance or something to a medicine. You know what I mean? Hmm. And it's like the potency of it could be very, very quick. I don't want to make like no drug type stuff. Yeah, go ahead, bro. But right, tell us about, you you're talking about getting high. You're talking about getting high. You got uh-huh. it. I'm talking about legal pharmaceuticals. <laughs> <laughs> but no, imagine like the potency. You know, your, your, the potency of the word sometimes. Like you can just, mm. or, or you can just be in prayer, or you can just, you know, kind of know when you're really, really just uh, have been denying yourself and you feel close to God. And then when we start doing stuff like this, man, you you know in your spirit, like, ah, oh, I, ain't, I ain't right. I don't yeah. feel right. And then you got to kind of build your way back into that. Uh, I don't know. What is the word I'm looking for? Oh, man. I don't know. I'm going to come back on that thought. But no, I, I like, like, because when you, when you started to say it, I, I seriously had to ask myself the question, like, like, because you said you made a statement, like, when you're doing these other things, you know, um, going for a jog or you know watching your shows and all that kind of stuff it's like you're distancing yourself you know and i had to ask myself that question like how is it that we're distancing ourselves when when we do these things rather than what we're supposed to do and it's because we're replacing you know like we're replacing the peace that we're supposed to get from god with these quick pleasures you know what i'm saying yeah so we we are we're substituting you know what i'm saying um yeah we yeah, we're, we're substituting and we're kind of like, you know, yeah, I, like, I'm going to do this instead. I'm going to do this instead. Yep. I'm going to do this instead. You know what I mean? And um, man, that's just that's And just it's funny. like, and, and you see what happens is now we have turned things that God wants us to enjoy and be pleasurable yeah. into something that is now like uh, burdensome to him because it's putting a, it's putting a wedge between us. Mm-hmm. Whereas like if you started, if you started your day you know, uh, with him seeking his face and all of that kind of stuff. And then you go about the eating and the drinking and enjoying mm. yourself or whatever. It's mm-hmm. a totally different thing because your heart is different at that point. But wow. if your heart is full wow. of pleasures versus like, you know, him, then those things is like, uh, uh, I don't know. It's almost like a defiling type of thing to do. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because what you seek should come from him, like, like the 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 sustenance, I guess, or like you know, like the substance of what you're looking for. You know what I'm saying? Should really yeah. come from him and not those things. And once once you're satisfied, you know what I'm saying? After going to him, those uh, you know those other things are secondary now. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like you don't hold them to the, you know, to the to the height of like, I'm looking at this thing to satisfy me. I'm looking at this thing to, to bring me my peace. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You just kind of look at them like, all right, I'm just, yeah, I just had it, you know, I just had a snack. Or I just a human a experience. Cool. Yeah. 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 But yeah. he's, he's your source. Not those things. Right. Yeah. Right. Ooh, the, you deep, bro. That's dope. Go ahead, yeah. You deep, bro. Yo, shut up, man. That was good. Um, wow. While you were talking, I was thinking about First Thessalonians, <laughs> y'all are silly. Go ahead. First Thessalonians five, actually, um, four and five. The whole context actually would encourage you all to read the book of First, Th- First and Second Thessalonians. Hmm. They're pretty short books, but um, the context of the th- this particular church, if I remember correctly, is they were awaiting the return of Christ at such a high level that they stopped doing God's work. Mm. They were just focused on, well, he's coming back tomorrow. Or in another sense, the world is going to end. Wow. So why do we need to do, <laughs> anything, do anything anymore? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Which is, is that not some of what we're doing with these coping? That's... Like it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But yeah. the encouragement that he gave, yeah. I'm reading from the beginning of First Thessalonians chapter five. Uh, let me see. Let's start at verse four. Let's go with four because it's it's a couple of good stuff in it's this good stuff in here. Verse four, mm-hmm. chapter five. It says, "But you are not in darkness, brothers, 
uh, for that day to surprise you like a thief. So it's talking about the day of the return. Wow. Okay, for you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then let us not sleep as others mm -hmm. do, but mm -hmm. let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But we, but since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. And he continues to talk about him dying for us and encourage yeah. one another. That's the thing too. Verse 11 is good. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. Yeah. I think that's an interesting spin on yes we have our coping mechanisms and things like that but we need to stay alert to stay sober to continue to spread um the gospel of jesus christ that is our mission yeah. and um stay awake in that regard like that the mission doesn't end just because we're going through this pandemic which is huge but yeah yeah you know what yeah. i'm saying There's like it's, it seems like where he's like at this point, stop. Right. 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 And what they were waiting for was a really large and global thing. It was more in a positive sense, like, oh, Jesus is coming back. Great. He's going to establish his throne. Mm -hmm. Great. We don't have to do anything anymore. But <laughs> first and Thessalonians talk about, uh, yes, you all do. This is right. not permission to go to sleep. So that was that's this, definitely this just honestly about that. should yeah. times like this. And this is a whole different like lane, but it should prompt us to want to spread the gospel more, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like if we think like, yo, any day now, anybody could get it, literally. Yeah. No no pun intended, but you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like we should yeah. wanna hit up our loved ones, hit up people, and we should be praying to God for kind of like how Paul did when he was in prison, like, give me an opportunity to present the gospel clearly to people. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we should be, and even, even this conversation, though other people are going to hear it. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like this for me personally is, is like, I don't know, man, it's just helpful because yeah. I haven't, I haven't really been speaking to a lot of believers to get encouragement, but like, yeah. we should be, we should be talking to each other, dude. We should be praying for each other, praying for ways to get the gospel out there more, you know, like, yeah, and, and and it sucks that I mean we all deal with the flesh, and it it really just sucks, dude. That yeah, we have to yeah. Deal with the flesh, man, because yeah. it gets in the way so much. Think, think, like here's here's what I've been thinking, man. Um, it's it's crazy as it sounds, but like, and you, I'm gonna say this, and it might not be an agreeable point, but like I feel like if you look at what's happening in everybody's lives right now like with people facing a world that they you know in a condition that they've never experienced before you know what i'm saying with people losing their jobs with people you know in fear like never before with people losing loved ones you know what i'm saying with people losing their entire life savings because the you know the market is crashing you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. all this craziness I think people are looking, you know, um, for like like a solution. You know, people are open like never before to, you know, uh, hear something encouraging, to hear something hopeful, to hear, you know, um, to hear the gospel. You know what I'm saying? Like, like probably like because everybody everybody's being in in you know some sense like humbled in some way you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. everybody's realized like all right we're all on the same you know we're all like i'm going through this with everybody else you know what i'm saying yeah. we're all kind of going through this you know what i'm saying so it's like like uh all right like what is you know what's what's jay's attitude right now let me see you know like how he's doing oh well you know yeah, he's a little bit you know he's going through some stuff, but he's he's trusting in he's trusting in God. He still has a positive attitude for the most part because he's relying on God. Let me take a look at Julia. Julia is you know still has a, a great attitude, still has peace. You know what I'm saying? Because she's relying on God. Why? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Let me see why. Because I don't have that peace. I I got all this anxiety. I got all this fear. Like you know what I'm saying? So I feel like people are open like like never before 
You know what I'm saying? And so it's like definitely not time for us to be, you know, I know we're going to struggle with it, but, you know, not to be super distracted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but to kind of be on our job more so now than ever before as people, you know, because we know, like, like even if we told our, like, personal testimonies, it's like, you know, we were, we were more than likely um, facing something or going through something, you know, and then God revealed himself, you know what I'm saying? Or I know it's not a situation for everybody, but for most of the people I've talked to, it's like, all right, you were in this type of situation, you know, and that, like, the, the dire need of a savior in that particular situation caused you, you know, to cry out, even though he was drawing you anyway, you know what I'm saying? And like, mm-hmm. that's when we had our first, you know, encounter with, with the Holy spirit or Christ, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, like, I feel like a lot of people are being taken to that point right now where it's like, they don't know how they're going to put food on the table, you know? And so it's causing them to pray, you know what I'm saying? For the first time. You know what I'm saying? They don't know what's going to happen in a couple of weeks, so it's causing them to pray, you yeah. know, for the first time. And it's like we need to, you know, be be uh, just as much as possible, you know, on our jobs to to point people to to Christ, you know, and the truth about them. Amen. You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, I just I just think that yeah. like now now is like a time for us to be super focused, you know. Yo, I, I say I, that, but I'm struggling. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I don't think there's been any more of a time, especially since I've been in Christ, where like people around me are saying stuff like, "Yo, I'm praying," or yeah. you know, like it's just just saying spiritual things who often would not say that, or or the other way where they're expressing like, "Yo, yesterday I was super like anxious, or I had a bad day, or I was depressed." Yeah. You know, like people are just opening up in a different way. Yeah. And I'm like just sitting back like, okay, you know, like, all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Like yeah. this this whole thing on on a on another like weird note, like this whole thing has kind of made me believe in God more in mm. a weird way. Like wow. I'm curious. Uh <laughs> Like, two ways. Two you got ways. to prove it to me. I know, mm-hmm. right? Don't do it. Don't have to prove yeah. it. <laughs> but like mm-hmm. the the fact of well, for us, right? Like, there's never been anything like this in our generation that has like swept over the entire world. Right. Um. Right. So when I read scriptures now about you know pestilence overcoming mm. the land and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like I can kind of like relate a little bit now, a little bit more wow. now. Like, yeah. Yeah, shoot, like God, when he's saying stuff, like <laughs> may, just because it ain't go down for you yesterday and it went yeah. down for them, like it could go down. And then the other part that uh may, makes me just convicted about him even more is like, how this thing happened so globally. Yeah. And I don't know how to articulate this thing the right way. Like, it just makes me realize that, like, Christ coming back and ruling the entire earth is, like, a real thing. Like, mm. if a virus can spread throughout the earth, like, the Holy Spirit could spread throughout the earth. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. if some something that he controls could just in the matter of like two weeks or whatever, two months, excuse me, yeah, spread throughout the entire world. Yeah. Like how much yeah. quicker could he when he comes back, he just like takes yeah. over. You know what I yeah. mean? Um, yeah. that might that might sound like really nah. silly, but I, it was just a thought that I had today. Like because yeah. I never this whole global thing is just is very it's weird to me. It's like, yeah. it's never happened before. <clears throat> it also, it also um, has been causing me to look at how quickly um, the systems that we depend on can all come tumbling down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like how, how rather than placing our trust in God, we, we trust in a lot of like systems, you know what I'm saying? And like, like people and, you know, all, 
uh, jobs and, you know, like all this kind of stuff. And like, that's where we place our faith. We place faith in 401ks and we place faith in, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, the, you know, like the, the school system and, you know, like, like all these different things, the government to do the right thing, to take care of us and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, a virus, you know, in a matter of weeks, like it's almost like a switch just got like, flipped, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. now none of that stuff, you know what I'm saying, is, is even what it was. A couple of weeks ago or a month ago you know what i'm saying so it's like yeah. you know like we like how many of us watch you know it's i don't think it's nothing wrong so don't 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 take this in the wrong way but it's like for a lot of us like sports was a major focus you know what i'm mm. saying we're like we spent hours and hours on sundays just watching people play games you know what i'm saying <laughs> and now oh. like you know and now you know that's completely done done away with so it's like our entire lives you know what I'm saying? All the things that we, you know, kind of like idolize in a way or put faith in in a way can all be changed, yeah. you know, in, in an instant. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, like, wow, man, like, <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. that's crazy to me. That's crazy to me. You know, and then like the fact that we even like, like we depend on, you, you never thought about how much you depended on the grocery store until <laughs> there's a threat that it could close. You know wow. what I'm saying? You know yeah. what I mean? You never thought yeah. about like like <laughs> it's so it's so many things, man. It's so many things that that are just like like right now. It's like wow, like I've depended on all these things when my dependence should really be on on God. You know what I'm saying? On God to provide all I need. You know, like mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm making a lot of sense, but like nah, you I, make I, sense. Just, I just feel like my eyes have been opened up. You know. So like how fast <laughs> things can turn around. Uh oh, I'm about to get ate up. Yeah. No, no, no. That's good. I'm I'm piggybacking off that. <sighs> I was thinking about um Julia scares me, man. Why she do that to me, <laughs> man? That look. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. She got the look um, of skepticism. She just like Yeah, yeah. No, that's a, that's more thinking. It's not doesn't it's not always. I mean, oftentimes it is skepticism. <laughs> this moment is not. Um, don't I'm gonna forget my thought. Let me get this out. Um, I was wondering when you were talking. Even as believers, do we really want to depend on God? Right. Mm-hmm. In that way, I feel right. like that this whole situation this crisis is challenging all of us do we really really believe in god for everything not just salvation not just the whole heaven and hell thing which is important eternal life is important but for him to feed our family tomorrow yeah. him to take care of us next week the next month and i was thinking about the people of israel that was one of their wow. biggest flaws you see what i'm saying they were chosen they were god's people but for whatever reason, they did not want to depend on him. And it was their downfall. It just maybe when you were talking, Marcus, I was thinking about them. And I wonder if God is trying to wake us up as a people of God. Like, yeah. you all think you depend on me. Let's see. Yeah. yeah. And and see, that's what's, what's like really, really uh, sticking out to me now. It's like, like these types of situations create a division between people who like say they have faith and yes. people who truly have faith. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Where it's like, mm-hmm. and, and, and you'll, you'll see the division by people who are, are uh, not, uh, yeah, who, who are comfortable and constantly freaking out, right? Versus like those who might freak out and then be like, but you know what? Nah, yeah. this don't, it don't even feel right for me to freak out because I done seen God do too much. I'm going to yeah. hold on to him. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So you start to see the difference between those who like profess it but have no relationship and those who truly have a relationship and true faith and are truly grounded yeah. in God. You know what I'm saying? And who are, who are comforted by his word and who you know trust in him with their lives. You know what I'm saying? It's like... But t- it, it takes times like this or, or you know, like <laughs> it, it takes times like this for us to see that, like where we really stand. Like we we yeah, have to yeah. have a time like this to know where we stand. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't say that like, well, you know, I knew I was on the other side. You know what I'm saying? Like I say it because 
like for the past couple of weeks, I've been having to ask myself, like, man, like if I if I do right. lose my income, you know what I'm saying? Like, what like like am I still gonna have my faith in God? If I lose, mm-hmm. you know, if somebody in my family dies as a result of this, do I start to question my faith? You know what I'm saying? If my kids get sick, do I start to question my you know what I'm saying? I gotta ask mm-hmm. myself those yeah. questions like where do I stand? And you know, so I think things like this, man, are like necessary. You know, because I like one of the questions I've always had is like, uh, like, like we'll we'll be uh, judged for all our deeds and our actions and our words and things like that, right? But like, like, why why is that necessary? If if like like, let me say this: it's like all right, we have to give an account for everything. Right. But God knows it all. Like, why do we have to give an account for it? Right. Like he knows it. Why doesn't he just do the judgment? Why do we have to give an account? But it's like we'll be sitting there, you know, reviewing everything like, oh, man, like this was my decision. You know what I'm saying? To to do this or to do that. And I guess what I'm getting at is like, like, how do I even put this into words? I'm having trouble articulating this, but it's like we decide to turn away from God or to continue with God to to not trust God or to trust God you know what I'm saying so like when we're giving yeah. an account it's like we 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 get to look at like okay I I didn't trust them there and I did my own thing oh mm. I trusted them there you know what I'm saying and and I did put my faith you know what I'm saying so it's like it's all shown back to us as to like what we truly did where we truly stood what we truly said in those moments what we truly decided mm. in our hearts at that time you know what I'm saying so I think all this is like it's it's a critical time when it comes to faith. And we were talking about it earlier too. Like, mm-hmm. like in I think it's in the book of Revelation, like when, when Jesus does return, he he kind of he, he talks about his return and he says, like, will I even find faith when I return? You know what I'm saying? And so yeah. for him to ask that question, it already means that like people are gonna be in a state where they probably would not believe. You know what I'm saying? The conditions of the world would be so that people probably wouldn't be believing in Christ. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's like you talking about a dark situation, but it it causes that very question to arise. You know, yeah. do I have faith or not? You know? Yeah, I was so. you just made me think about the point of like for some people because it makes it, God can kind of like pose this question now, like, well, you know, everything was cool before, but did you did you love me conditionally? You yeah, know? yeah. Because Man. I think a part of a part of what a part of our worship is about what God has done, um, mm. and you see that uh, especially in the Old Testament with like, you know, people building altars um, with uh, God instructing um i think joshua um even moses to tell the people you know he's the god who has delivered us from egypt he you know we you saw him uh split the red sea and you know protect us from the egyptians and you know the manna and all that kind Mm. of stuff water provided like reminding the people of these things um right and then of course when it gets into uh, when you get into Joshua and the wars and stuff like that and them overtaking people's lands, it's like, remind the people that I gave them over, I gave them uh, into your hand and stuff like that. But wow. like, so yeah, we we should have these reminders of what God has done. And I would even like encourage people like take take that maybe even as an exercise, like write down the things that God has even done before this that he's delivered you from. Um that. And then part B, what I was about to say is like, for some people, though, this might be their first encounter with that test. Mm. You know, yeah. like I met, you know, there are people on various ends of the spectrum in terms of their walk. And like they could be they could be have, have lived like a a fairly like uncompromised life up to now, like. I'm mm-hmm. thinking of somebody who's like, you know, just got a good education, good job, family, this, everything is like perfect, no issues. And then boom, like this hits. And now, 
lot of work, like you were saying. Um, so I think for those type of people who they can't go to this plethora of things that like God has already delivered them from, going back to what I opened up with and like, you know, he's like, well, now this is in front of you. Did you like me just because of what I was giving you? Or do you wow. know who I am? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. do you love me because of who I am? So I think it's a time for all of us to kind of like look to obviously what God has done for us before and delivered us from, but then also, you know, for us to look at and, and really examine our, ourselves and, and who do we know him to be and do we love him for him and who he is and who he's revealed himself to be um and for a lot of people i think it'll be that time to like go into that space with him like yo who are you because everything around me i don't have anything to stand on right now you know yeah yeah wow yeah. wow yeah. While you were talking, uh, Jason, I was thinking about, and I'm piggybacking off of what wow. uh, you said, Marcus, as well, with about the faith piece. I wonder if this is a time for all of us to kind of evaluate where we are, like, in real life, like, not just who we claim to be, you know, mm -hmm. to the public, what our avatar, what our IG might say, or Facebook, or whatever we got, um, but who, how we really feel about God, how we, do we believe in him, to what degree, yeah. Um, in very real terms, I think this is a one of those moments in life for all of us to kind of figure that out, which is tough because I was thinking about the example that came to my mind was Jesus on the cross mm. and how he fed thousands of people. Thousands of people saw his miracles. Mm. And he had hundreds, probably hundreds of thousands of, of disciples by the time he got to the cross. But by the time they put him up there, mm -hmm. There was only a couple of people left. Wow. Mm. <laughs> wow. And that's hard to really, wow. that's hard to think about. But Dang. yeah. I Ooh. wonder, I hope that's not the case with this situation mm. we got today. But yeah. if we, have, we have a couple of examples that are the truth, but they're not the greatest to look at. I kind of yeah. like you were saying, like, is there, are we, do we really love God? Do we really serve God for who he is? Even if he allows things to happen that are completely terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Because. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> because, like, not only do you have to answer the question of where you stand with God, but you also have to answer the question now, right? Who is God? Right? Yeah. Like, what is his character? You know? Like, who who is God? Like, wow. like. I thought he was, you know, all prosperity. I thought it was all good when I when I served God. I thought that I wouldn't come into sickness. I thought, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I thought that everything will be perfect peaches and cream. But now I got to figure out who is God. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, like, who is the God that I say I serve? You know, and it, it should cause us, you know, and I, my prayer is that it causes people to dive into scripture to discover his character. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? And not turn away from him because they think he's he's no longer real. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But then, you know, it's, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, like, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Like, like I just, I, I, I'm, I think... go ahead, bro. Yeah, because <laughs> what we begin to realize is that our mere existence, even now amidst coronavirus, is by his grace. Mm -hmm. And yeah. everything, everything good that even happens to us, even the, uh, even the times, because I'm thinking about Peter, like, denying him. And it was him who said, like, it was when I say him, it was Jesus who said, like, you know, I won't let Satan overtake you, though. Mm, like, you know, yeah. like when when you have when you have messed up, come back to your brothers, Peter, you know, like yeah. be encouraged still. And like I'm thinking about Job and people who were afflicted. I'm thinking about Jonah, who mm -hmm. was like, nah, 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 God, I ain't with it. Like he was straight up just denying God. But then. God still used him for his purpose and he, you know, got his relationship with God restored. Like, it's always God who is, who is the, I guess, the center of all of our worship when it comes to all the time, obviously, but especially these times, like, 
understanding like the fullness of his grace mm. um even when we have these anxieties and doubts and stuff like that like it's it's ultimately him who is going to be like all right let me let me put you back where i need you to be wow wow so he keeps you he keeps you mm. yeah yeah so maybe it made me uh like you saying that like made me think like what because speaking of him keeping us, right, like, that's not something we're just saying. Like, that's something we stand on the word when we say that, you know. And, like, what other, like, what, what can we point people to, especially those who are, you know, um, learning to trust in, you know, God, the fact that he keeps us, the fact that all things are working together for the good of those who love the Lord. Like, like what, yeah. do we, what can we point them to in the word to stand on to kind of, like, even you know, like, like speak and learn to speak in confidence, you know what I'm saying, over themselves, over their household, you know, to increase their faith and things like that. Like, what can we point them to? Yeah. I want to, I want to read this uh, passage from 2 Corinthians 1, starting at verse 8. And this is Paul, and he's talking about when he was uh, in Asia, and I think he was like shipwrecked and all this type of stuff i think that's mm -hmm. at this point i may be wrong though but he says we do not want you to be unaware bre brethren of our affliction which came to us in asia that we were burdened excessively beyond our strength so that we despaired even of life he said indeed we had the sentence of death within ourselves so that we would not trust ourselves but mm -hmm. in god who raises the dead who wow. delivered us from so great a peril of death and will deliver us, he on whom we have set our hope. And then he goes on and he says, he will yet deliver us and you also joining and helping us through your prayers so that thanks may be given by many persons on our behalf for the favor bestowed on us through the prayers of many. So like that's, that's packed with so much. But um, I guess the points that I wanted to pull out is like, when he's saying that he was burdened beyond his strength, that he even thought he was going to die. But he said it happened so that they wouldn't trust in themselves, but in God who raises the dead. Mm. Um, yeah. So even in times like this, I feel like there is, and it's not even a feeling, it's just a, a truth. And I know that God uses this stuff to draw us to him. So when we say these scriptures, like all things work together for good for those who love him, and are called according to its purpose, like, this is, this is the extent of that for many of us. Like, you, you may be facing death, or you may be facing these, these trials that you have, you can't even comprehend, but it's like, I feel in many of those situations, if not all of them, it's so that you don't trust in yourself, but you trust in God. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, so yeah, that that's my two cents, and and that again, that's Second Corinthians one and eight to kind of to look to that. I just like it because it's so extreme, and you don't we don't hear uh, we don't we don't we don't necessarily hear that kind of uh, rhetoric in the New Testament a lot. Of like, man, we thought we were about to die. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah. It's, yeah very specific to him so yeah yeah that's good i was um i was thinking of actually three chapters over from that spot jason uh in verse, chapter four verse seven is a little passage that we may or may not be familiar with it's the one that talks about uh but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show mm -hmm. that the surpassing power belongs to god and not to us we are afflicted in every way but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to, to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Mm. Then it goes on to talk about how we carry in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus can be made manifest. And then he talks about preaching the gospel and we have to believe and speak, knowing yeah. that no matter what happens to us, even if it is death, Jesus is going to raise us from the dead. Woo! That's a that's a tough that's a tough pill. And then verse sixteen is probably kind of like the conclusion or summary. <laughs> it is tough pill. So we do not 
lose heart because of all those things. We do not lose heart. Though our outer self, these bodies, which can be affected by the coronavirus, could waste away, but our inner self is being renewed day by day. Mm -hmm. This wow. For this light momentary affliction, think about that. What, what mm. you just said, Jason, and they're facing death. Something was terrible that was going on with Paul and them that he calls it a light momentary affliction. It's mm -hmm. preparing for us an eternal weight of glory. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's in that's wow. in Second Corinthians 4. There's a lot of this is in the yeah. face of death, he's saying this stuff. So yeah. if we can figure out what Paul figured out. Yeah. I think I think uh <laughs> I also think uh like you know what though? Like this this um this calls into question the gospel, you know, mm -hmm. because Paul had an eternal perspective. You know what I mean? Like he viewed he viewed himself or his his body as like a jar of clay you know like but it, like like disposable you know what i'm saying in a sense knowing that his spirit was now alive as far from god's perspective and eternal you know what i'm saying so he kind of looked yeah. at it like ah, eh, i'm here i know this is temporary you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying but i know what awaits me eternally is is so amazing that i shouldn't even be concerned you know what I'm saying about what's what's happening here, you know, yeah. but but that others are also eternally saved, mm -hmm. you know. So it's like that perspective. That's why I say that's a that's a tough pill, but that's yeah. the reality of the gospel. You know what I'm saying? To where we're not even looking at these momentary afflictions, we're not looking at these temporary situations, but we are we are thinking about the eternal goal. You know what I'm saying? The eternal perspective is is what we should have in mind. But that's Amen. that's the real yeah. gospel, though. You know, yeah, like, like the real gospel is an eternal gospel. It ain't about you know a lot of temporary, temporary what things. You get right now, yeah, yeah. It ain't about that. So, Whew. but uh, yeah. All right. Well, well, Jay, I'm <laughs> feeling. I'm feeling like uh, you know, I don't. I don't know if I don't know if this met our uh intention. But I like how it went, man, uh, because, you know, we, I think a lot of times on the show, we get into our, you know, correction bag and we get a little rebukey and we get a little yeah. critical and overly critical of things. And rightly so is I think it's a, a righteous indignation for a lot of stuff that we see out here. But um I, I I hope this blessed people because uh you know we're we're this is our effort to be encouraging. <laughs> and uh you know yeah. um and you know times like this will make us do episodes like this. Um and uh yeah, I think we should definitely try to do try to uh do episodes like this more. Um and I know we talked about doing maybe a promises of God's thing. So God yeah. um, episode, or maybe the next one after that, we don't know, but we're going to get more into the promises of God that we can rely on at this time. Um, yeah. And uh, we're going to just narrow down how we want to go about doing that. But yeah, um, there is a, I guess a part two to this episode that will be, mm. um, uh, driving home what God's promises are. Um, Marcus yeah. was mentioning like he opening up the gospel a bit more in this eternal aspect. Um, so yeah, we I guess we can open that up a little bit more in the next episode too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Uh, but yeah, we hope that you guys are safe and wise and all of your going in and coming out. And uh, God is still the same. Yeah, his promises and his goodness is still the same, and that's what we yeah. that's what we should rely on. Uh, not what the news tells us or uh, what's going on at work or any of that. As bad as it may seem, and as real as it may seem, you yeah. got to believe in God who you haven't seen uh, more than this stuff that's around us. Wow, I think that's yeah. a scripture too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> even in yeah. the. Yeah. Wow. 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 Even in death, that's what a way to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what a way to. Uh, 
But we walk when, by faith and not by yeah, faith, right? Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. It's and the I, gospel. I think it is the gospel for sure. One one thing that's been um like uh let me ask you this before we before we like, you know, head out. Um what what have you guys been thinking about as far as like, you know, like like what God said? Because I know like we're saying like we know hold on to these scriptures, right? But is there one that has stood out to you specifically? You know what I mean? Or even a thought. It doesn't even have to be a scripture. But is there anything that has stood out to you specifically that you've kind of been like, you know, just thinking about that comforts wow. you? You know what I'm saying? Because like one thing, one thing that kind of that kind of keeps crossing my mind is like, you know, like you put. And this is it's a personal thought. It's not a scripture reference, right? But it's like, like we put our lives in God's hands. He's the handler of our lives now. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, he's not going to fail. He's not going to mess up. He has the ultimate wisdom. He knows everything to do. You know, and that's that's why we can, you know, if we were to point to a scripture, we can go back to that scripture that says, all things are working together for the good. You know what I'm saying? And then, even with that scripture, we have to keep it in perspective that it's an eternal good. You know what I'm saying? It's not a temporary good. So it's like, he knows what is eternally best for us. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and so he's handling things from an eternally best perspective, you know. Mm-hmm. But the thing that we have to do is to really put our lives completely in his hands, so he can handle it, you know. Amen. But yeah. is there is there anything that you guys have just been kind of like falling back on, you know, just just to you know as your encouragement, and then we can kind of just push that encouragement out to those who are listening. Julia? Uh, there's not a particular verse. Um, I was looking at 2 Corinthians 5 and 20 just now about being ambassadors for Christ, but mm-hmm. mine is more of a thought also, kind of like a summary of a few verses that uh, whatever will be, will be. Um, mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it was something else. The prayer piece um, from an active standpoint has been encouraging me I just got done reading the prophets in the Old Testament. And I noticed that of all the doom and gloom, there's a lot of doom and gloom in there. But every now and then there's a verse here and there where it says a prophet prayed or a righteous man prayed or this small group that was righteous prayed. And it said something like, maybe God might spare more people connected to the prayer of the one or the small group that was still, that had still had the faith in him in that terrible time. And so that mm. kind of encourages me to keep praying. You never know what one person's prayer might do, especially if you or I are walking with God. That's kind of been an encouraging piece, like to not give up prayer, like, oh, well, if there's this many people sick, this many people already passed away. Yeah. And, you know, who knows where the numbers are going to go? What is my little prayer going to do? Like, yeah. I've been encouraged, like, it's possible it might do a lot. Yeah, so, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think Boy. for me, um I think it's been a, a thought type of thing also. Um where he's he's kind of like showing me like just keep doing the work that I called you to do. Um and stop stop uh literally like stop thinking so much, you know, and just do what I told you to do each day, you know, like, don't think about tomorrow. That'll have its own troubles. So, you know, that's scripture for you. But like, don't worry about tomorrow. Just like handle what's right in front of you for the day that you have at task, you know, and like, Mm. I think, I think uh, even, Mm -hmm. even my wife having her, because she has a contract that is, we have to do stuff for Tuesday, that's due Tuesday. So like, if I didn't have that to do because I'm not with my clients right now, I probably would have just been like soaking even more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so even that has been ministering to me, like do whatever you're supposed to do on a given day, whatever I tell you. And like, obviously yeah. sometimes, and I want to add to that, obviously like more prayer um, uh, and, and, and reading his word a little bit more systematically than I do. I don't, mm. 
I don't personally, my, my uh, desire isn't to just like, oh, let me, you know, put my finger somewhere and start reading. Like, I actually want to have some goals in mind, I guess you could say. Um, but that's, that, has, that gives, that gives me like enthusiasm every day, I guess you could say. But like, but yeah, just, just doing what I have to do each day and don't worry about tomorrow. That's a good one. Yeah, it's good. That is good. Yeah, and that's yeah. it. All right. All right, well. All right, gang. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see y'all the next one. See y'all the next one. All right, later. later.